The vi viral pandemic is no longer a question of if, but it's a question of when. SARS demonstrated for the first time the, the profound sensitivity of the modern global economy to a contagious, spreading infectious disease. But the good news, the good news is that our hands are not tied. In fact, the policy implications become crystal clear from these studies. By immediately outlining and implementing a specific policy prescription, we can minimize not only the direct economic effects of a pandemic, but perhaps even more significantly, greatly reduce the costly indirect effects. There are six steps we must take. Number one is communicating with the public. To allay irrational fear, communication must be the bedrock of every public policy response. Communication of accurate and reliable, consistent information isn't an option. It is the antidote, the vaccine for irrational fear. Second is surveillance. Remember the forest fire? We must stop on those sparks before they are picked up by the wind and fly away to ignite yet another fire. The sooner we detect, and identify and contain that avian flu, both in humans but in animals as well, the better the economic prognosis will be. That's why we need a real-time international threat detection system, and that's why I proposed as much as a billion dollars to build it. Third are antiviral agents. Antiviral agents are the only frontline therapeutic tool we currently have to treat the avian flu and to slow its spread. Fourth, vaccines are our best means for prevention. With our current grossly inadequate vaccine manufacturing capacity, it would take as long as a whole year, a whole year to achieve that bug to drug. And that is the window from when you first identify that specific virus to the time that you have that vaccine made and ready for distribution. In time for pandemic, or a pandemic, that's simply an unacceptable way. We should target tax credits to increase manufacturing capacity, streamline regulations, offer balanced, sensible, common sense liability protection for manufacturers to make these life-saving medicines. Fifth is research and development. And research is our best hope as we look to the future. We must harness the best minds in academia, in the public, and in the private sectors. We need to bring them together to form a Manhattan Project for the 21st century, which can help us better defend against naturally occurring accidental and intentional threats, including infectious diseases. Six, we need stockpile and surge capacity. Our current health infrastructure simply and unequivocally lacks the capacity to respond effectively today to a severe pandemic. We don't have the number of hospital beds. We don't have the number, a sufficient number of ventilators or healthcare personnel or morticians or vaccines or antiviral agents or communication networks that we need all would be overwhelmed. Being prepared means training first responders and ensuring a civilian volunteer corps to step in and help handle that surge of demand. It means allocating adequate surge facilities, that's vaccination sites and treatment centers, laboratories and morgues. You have to ask yourself, has your community done so? We know that a pandemic influenza is no longer a question of if, but is a question of when. Now is the time to act. We have the intellect. We have the, the ingenuity. We have the tools. We have the knowledge to minimize the blow. My duty as an elected official and as a doctor is to ensure that we begin filling that prescription 
today. Our economy, our country, our mortality depend on it. Thank you.